Hi folks, we're in the Cobb TV studio with Cobb Chairman Mike Boyce, uh, a day or two after the big election day here, and uh, a lot of people reported lines that just showed everybody was engaged. Was there an election this week? <laughs> <laughs> really? <Newsflash>. flash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought, uh, first of all, um, I was at a, uh, uh, a veterans program, I believe it was yesterday, where the guest speaker um, had a really interesting quote that she took from somebody. But her line was is that um, freedom is not free. It's a matter of fact, it's a toll road paid for those, you know, who, uh, who did their civic duty by, share, by, by serving. And I think that uh, voting is one of those uh, obligations that as a civic duty that it's not, a, it's not just a right, it's something that you should be doing. And if you don't be doing, you should be questioning what it is that you do for your country if you can't at least vote. And I cannot be more pleased by the turnout. Yes, there were lines, but there were circumstantial uh, outside uh, reasons why we had no control over that. First of all, a, a federal judge last year sequestered over 700, almost 700 of our voting machines uh, in response to a uh, litigation involving a campaign. So when you lose nearly one third of your voting machines, uh, that's gonna put a big imposition on you logistically otherwise right away. Second of all, both everybody, uh, no matter who, what political party you know you uh, you swear to, uh, worked real hard to get out the vote, and it, clearly it worked. Uh, we had almost uh, three million people vote, er, uh, two million people vote early in Georgia, and of course Cobb County, uh, the lines were evident everywhere. And I'd be surprised that for the first time, when I went to vote in my precinct, there was a line. Usually on Tuesday morning when I vote on voting day, there's no line, but. This time I stood in line with everybody else. And it's one of those days where everybody's equal. Uh, you have to do your part, but, uh, but I, I, I'll have to say my hats off to everyone that voted. Uh, they were in line, they were patient, they understood it. And even though on Tuesday it was raining, they made the necessary adjustments to, uh, you know, to make the line somewhere where you weren't being rained upon. And uh, the, the, this, the voting also has a, uh, you know, a privilege where if you're 75 years of age or older, you can go to the headline, you know, and vote that way. So I think this county has done everything we possibly can to encourage you to vote. And uh, still, we didn't get 70% of the people in the county voting. But those that 70 but did vote, I want my hats off to them. Thank you, th thank you for doing your part, for continuing to make America free by doing your, by getting out there and supporting your candidate no matter who they are. And also I want to commend uh, Janine Eveler and her team. Uh, this year, as you know, in the budget, we, uh, we provide additional funding in there to plus, to plus up her team. And we weren't clairvoyant about it. It just happened to be a requirement that was argued during the budget process as to why she and her team needed more people. And, turn, and, and, we were, and the need for this was borne out almost immediately by this election. So I know Janine was, uh, was pleased to have the additional people. And uh, we need to continue to support this voting process. It is a cornerstone for our political system and we made need to make sure that we do everything possible to support it with the necessary funding and other, uh, other, other actions that allow everybody in this county to vote uh, whenever the opportunity arises. I think one thing she saw that we certainly saw this year is that, you know, when the election department typically in years past would focus on that one day, mm -hmm. election day, but so many people now are getting into the advanced voting sure. that really taxes the resources. That's true, uh, but that's just the nature, I think, it reflects how busy people are. It's all well and good to say, well, we have one day of the year when everybody gets to get out and vote. Uh, but the, the, re the, re the reality is, is that people have busy lives now. And I think this government recognizes that. I think the state of Georgia recognizes that, which is why they prov have provisions to spread out the voting uh, throughout, uh, throughout a certain period of time. Plus the ever-present absentee ballots. You know, uh, if, you can't, if you're not gonna be in town or you just don't wanna stand in line that long, you know, send in your, ap absentee, your application for absentee ballot. I had an email uh, from a, a couple that I know that are elderly, and they wanted to know if, uh, where their absentee ballot was. And so once I ascertained, you know, where they lived and uh, where they sent the address to, it turns out that the absentee ballot had showed up that day in their mail, and they'd already voted. So people want to vote. We give them every opportunity to do so. And the second thing is that I have a little report here where we had 115... Uh, Precincts are open, 142 precincts are open for voting uh, on Tuesday, and 115 of them were churches or schools, almost equal, equal, equal numbers. That's also another uh, indicator of how this community gets together 
to, uh, you know, get behind this effort to give people the opportunity to vote. And I think that the schools uh, and churches today, because they are targets uh, by some real people out there who just, you know, prefer to use terrorism rather than, than the reasonable discourse to get their point of view across, churches and schools today have been targets. And the fact that churches and schools in this county would still open themselves up to let people come vote there speaks highly of the uh, Marietta and Cobb school systems and also the many places of worship in this county that they're all, they realize we're all in this together and they've done their part. Yep, and I know the kids enjoy the day off of school that day. It's okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, when I'm out and about, elections aside, one of the big topics always is things that have to do with our roads and our Department of Transportation. And, mm -hmm. and I know the person who leads that's an important figure in this county and we're about to take some action on that. We are, we, as you know, uh, our former director resigned a number of months ago and uh, we haven't had an interim uh, during that time. Someone that's been with the county for a while, however, and very experienced professionalized otherwise. And I'm very pleased to announce that on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning, we're going to formally nominate, and I'm very, I'm sure we're going to approve uh, the selection of Erica Parrish to be our new director of transportation. She has already shown herself during this interim period that she's responsive, she understands the needs of this community, and she's hardworking. And I think that we have once again, like we have in the last, uh, you know, two years, found somebody that's going to fit right into the culture we have here and once again uh, make all of us at the board look good because she's going to lead a team that gets out there and does things that uh, where the citizens expect the best and they're going to get it, particularly from the DOT. And she's coming in as director right at the time we could get, be start getting that snow and mm -hmm. that's when everybody really pays attention to what our DOT folks do. It is, but, I, I, but again she's also coming at a time when the latest budget uh, provided additional funding for 20 additional people to start attacking uh, what I call the jungle in our right-of-ways and the garbage issues that are out there. So uh, she's going to be coming on at a time when we're starting to restore services and she was, uh, she's the right person at the right time. And I know that uh, in about six months here we're going to be really, really pleased by what we've done here to plus up the DOT to help us, uh, you know, give a, uh, not just a, a pristine nature to a county, but it's also a county that we say we expect the best, we delivered in all areas. Right. Very, very soon when people go to our main website, CobbCounty.org, they're going to see something drastically different. And, and that effort is going to pay off, I think, in a better user experience, but shows what our IS department does for the county. Yes. Well, we have a, a terrific, terrific director of uh, our information services, uh, Sharon Stanley. Uh, she's a veteran, uh, for, uh, retired from the United States Navy, and uh, she just returned from a trip where she was provided uh, she was selected as the Infotech Research Group uh, Chief Information Officer of the Year. She got a really nice trophy, which uh, I know she, she realizes that that wasn't her, that was her team that did that. And she's just another example of the terrific quality of people we have leading this county here uh, in the in our county efforts to make sure that everyone uh, goes to the website and gets the information they need right away in this 21st century because if it's not on your phone, uh, for the most part, people aren't going to, uh, they're not going to find out what's going on. And we are we're slowly migrating to that technology, and Sharon's leading that. I could not be more happy and proud of what she's accomplished on her team. And I think people will, will notice when they come to CobbCounty.org for services of any kind, they'll find it works better on their phone yes, it than it used to. Yeah. I mean, I don't, we also did want to talk, too, just about where we stand on this uh, ATL transit situation mm -hmm. and all that going on. I was at a meeting downtown today. We're still really in the early stages. Well, as you know, uh, the, the state legislature uh, last spring passed House Bill 930, and one of the requirements in this bill was that um, they divided um, the 13 metro area into 10 districts, 10 transportation districts, and Cobb County is in three of those districts. And it was uh, my responsibility to, uh, to organize a meeting of delegates for two of the districts, and we've had those two meetings already. Uh, we nom we uh, selected uh, and a, um, a business person for one district and an academician for another district. Uh, and then I'll be going to Atlanta next week to be part of a committee, I'm not, I'm not organizing this time, to select uh, the member for the third district that we're in. This is on top of the uh, transportation survey, which as you know this week the, we're going to do the final run through, look at all the questions. Uh, give the final approval for them. Then we're going to be doing the survey here very shortly where we can go out and ask over a thousand people in the county how they feel about transit and what their views on it. 
And this is in conjunction with a transportation study, which I believe the report should be coming out here very soon, if not this month, and then on the heels of the uh, comprehensive transportation plan. So all three of these products uh, we're going to use to start uh, putting together a, a presentation for town halls where we can go out starting next year and engage the public as to what it is they think that we should be doing with regard to transit and transportation, what kind of projects they think that might address those issues, and most importantly, uh, how much they're willing to pay for it. I, people are really, you could tell how important this is by the number of legislators that showed up to your meeting. It's usually hard to get them in one room at the same time. And whenever we've gone out and solicited comments, as we have on this right. uh, program as well, we, we've literally got thousands of, of replies. So people, this seems to be something that really is important to people. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, as always, I encourage people, the, you know, you need to talk to your commissioners. You need to talk to the staff. We want to hear your points of view because you shape how... Uh, we vote up here. But more importantly for us, it tells us those areas where perhaps we need to do, do a better job of communicating with the public to clear up some misunderstandings. So we're going to take all this effort and we're going to slowly move it forward into the future and I'll guarantee you like we did last year, you'll be fully engaged via the town hall so we can hear what it is that uh, we're trying to do, get your feedback on that and then most importantly have you shape our decisions. Right. Well, there'll be plenty of uh, opportunity for everyone to give their opinion on our website, Facebook pages, all the mm -hmm. social media, his email, his newsletters, as well as the commissioners as well. So uh, feel free to get involved in all of that to stay in tune and we'll keep everyone updated. And I just want to end this uh, session by uh, thanking every, every veteran in this county. We have over 50,000 of them. As you know, this weekend we celebrate Veterans Day. And uh, again, it goes to what I said earlier in the program here. Those are the ones who paid their civic duty by serving. And uh, we are a proud, the proud uh, county of uh, members of five, all five branches of the service, because I consider the Coast Guard a number of the service. And this is their weekend to be recognized. And uh, it's just really, really great to be in a country where we finally acknowledge the sacrifices and commitment they've made to keep this country free. All righty. Well said. Thank you. All right. See you next week.